tell everybody what does your business look like today? You got a long history, you bought thousands of houses, but you know, in today's economy with what we got going on, what does your business look like now? Well, I've bought a house about every four to five days for over two decades. And, you know, it's about a hundred houses a year. And I want to be really clear on something. I, I know right across the street, there's somebody doing five times that amount. I mean, there's always a faster gun. There's always a, uh, you know, bigger, bigger guy out there. I'm, I'm just saying where I'm at. That's where I'm at. And I've been at that level for a long time. It's a comfortable place for me. I don't want to do more than that. Um, it's a challenge these days to do 100 houses. You know, in COVID, we only did 83, but there was a point in time there I didn't know if I was going to break 40. Uh, no one knew what was really going to happen. So um, I buy houses with OPM, other people's money, private money. One of the things that Jay teaches, I have $26 million of private money. And it uh, didn't happen overnight. It happened over a couple of decades. And it's amazing what happens when you borrow money from people and you pay them back as you promised. They give you more and then they give yeah. you some more. Then they introduce you to your friends that have more than they had. And then, you know, it just kind of keeps ratcheting up. So um, I, in fact, I had so much private money that I had to start a private hard money loan company to keep it all out because, you know, just because you got access to a lot of money doesn't mean you go out and start making stupid deals. So I, I keep my underwriting the same. And then if I can't buy enough houses under that underwriting, then I loan it out to my competitors who found deals before me that are 50 cents, 60 cents on the dollar and I'll finance them. And I keep that money occupied on short term, you know, notes so that it's available for me if and when I'm ready. And if I'm not ready, it's out working and I'm helping my private lenders make a return on their money. My money that I borrow is, um, it's non-recourse collateral only wrappable, which means I can buy the house for $50,000 from a private lender. I use the private lender's money. And then I can sell or finance the house for a hundred thousand with 10,000 down, carry the $90,000 balance at 10% for 30 years. And I don't have to pay the underlying lien off. No, that's hence wrappable. I, I someone who buys my house owes me 90,000, say they owe me 850 a month. And then they send the payment to me. And then I have to send, you know, 350 of that 850 over to my private lender and I get to keep what's in the middle, but I'm not a landlord. I'm a bank. Um, you know, they're sending me their mortgage payment. And when the air conditioner breaks, it's not my air conditioner because I sold them the house. And so today, you know, with all the glitz and glam and the TV shows and the flip this and flip that and everybody's a house. You know, if you notice that everyone's everyone's a home investor. I mean, it's like must be the most popular um, side gig on the planet. Um, so we really had to buckle down and and uh, hone the fine art of finding distressed and motivated sellers, you know, uh, and also had to, to refine the art of moving quickly um, to get to them and also had to open up our wheelhouse. It's not just houses anymore. It could be land, own, you know, we can buy land and owner finance raw land to people that want to put something on it, which is what I look for. I don't want to just finance a bunch of land because in the in the event there's a debacle and I get the land back and maybe it's tight or economic times that land's not moving, then it's a little hard to make raw land produce an income. So I owner finance my land only to people who want to put improvements on it now, you know, and they're putting their improvements on top of my collateral so that if I ever get the property back, I, I it's worth a lot more and or I can rent it or put someone in it to make an income because there's improvements on it now. Hopefully enough improvements that I can collect some rent. Um, and then mobile homes and land. I became very, I've always been, I've always taken a left into the mobile homes when the recessions hit or when the competition for houses got big. So I know mobile homes very well and mobile homes and land offer a great opportunity, especially if you're in a culture, say like the Hispanic culture who values an acre or two over a postage size stamp, you know, residential lot. And of course these things 
are outside the city limits, you know, out, out in the outer parts of the county, if not just outside the county, where there's very little restrictions and you can do what you want. Because a lot of these people that ha want these half acre, three quarter acre, acre places, they want goats, chickens, sheep, um, burros, uh, cows, uh, horse, <laughs> Shetland, you know, they, they want all kinds of things and they don't want some HOA telling them what they can do. So if you drive through my portfolio from house to house to house, it parts of it look like a third world country, but Hey, the payments are coming in and these people got stuff to eat. So if you don't think they have something to eat, just look in their front yard. There's animals walking around everywhere. 